I want to tell you about an exciting project that started with a very basic question. Is it possible to achieve microsecond scale latency and high throughput using Linux kernel stack? The question itself is obvious. There seems to be a widespread belief in our community that Linux cannot achieve such a goal. There are two commonly cited reasons for this belief. First, as you all know, in the past few years, storage and network hardware performance has improved by 10 to 100x, but single core performance has been stagnant. As a result, one must use multiple cores to achieve near hardware capacity throughput. The challenge, however, is that traditional Linux processing pipelines are extremely rigid. The kernel processing of a request submitted on a core happens on that core itself. For example, if the application submits a request on core zero, all the kernel processing for this request is performed on, on core zero. And there is no way to offer a part of this processing to other cores. So we refer to this as a static database. This makes it extremely hard to efficiently utilize the multiple cores, limiting throughput. And this problem is worse for multi-tenant deployment, where the applications with different performance goals can share the cores. For example, static database also means that latency-sensitive requests can be blocked by requests from uh, superbound applications running on the same core. Thus, the static data paths limit uh, both throughput and latency. Let us dive deeper. Here, we run uh, latency-sensitive applications, LFs, and a superbound application, TF, located on a single CPU core. The applications access data on a remote in-memory storage server. We observe that when applications have all resources to themselves, Linux can achieve good latency and throughput. However, as more applications compete for the same host resources, latency degrade by as much as 9x due to the head of line blocking problem. It turns out that polling based systems also suffer from a similar problem. For example, the most widely deployed user, user space storage stack, SPDK, can also achieve low latency and high throughput in the isolated case, but suffers from 139x latency inflation and 6x throughput degradation when applications share the cores. This is due to the poor interplay between pooling based designs and CPU schedulers. But one can avoid this problem by giving higher priority to LFs. But now LFs will take all the CPU cycles, resulting in near zero throughput for TFs. So in summary, we observed that Linux and SPDK can achieve either low latency or high throughput, but not both. So in this work, we present Block Switch, a new storage architecture that enables Linux to achieve microseconds scale tail latency and near hardware capacity throughput without any modifications in any other layers of the Linux kernel stack. Here, I will show you a glimpse of block switch's performance. So let's look at the case when tens of applications accessing remote in-memory in storage are co-located. This resulting complex interference between commute, compute, storage, and network layers. So even at such extreme, uh, block switch can achieve 10 microsecond average latency and less than 200 microsecond tail latency. This is significantly better than both Linux and SPDK. And it does so while maintaining throughput higher than SPDK and nearly the same as Linux. So our key observation here is that today's Linux storage stack is conceptually similar to network switches. This is due to the combination of two architectural components. First is a um, block multi queue uh, architecture that consists of popcorn block layer queues. And the second 
we have a multiple storage and network hardware. For example, local SSD and the need for remote access. So each device's driver exposes multiple queues for request submission, one, one per core. So request from applications first go into the plug layer queues and are then mapped into the corresponding driver queue. So if we think of the block layer queues as ingress queues and the driver queues as egress queues, then what is in the middle looks like a network switch. Inspired by this insight, block switch introduces a switched architecture to the Linux storage stack. So this enables it to decouple request processing from application cores and adapt classical techniques from computer networking literature, such as multi egress queues, prioritization, and load balancing. We now dive deeper into the architecture of block switch. Say we have two application classes. Block switch creates multiple egress queues per core, one for each application class. So in this example, we have a total of four egress queues per device. Note that for each remote access driver queue, there, there's a separate underlying TSP socket. On each core, the LLAB and TF requests are now mapped to separate egress queues and processed by separate connect thread. So to keep things simple, now we will just um, focus on single uh, storage device like this. Unlike today's Linux, block switch allows flexible mapping from ingress to egress queues. For example, requests um, submitted by applications on core zero can be mapped not only to core zero egress queues, but also to core one's egress queues. This enables block switch to decouple uh, request processing from application cores. On top of this architecture, block switch realizes three key techniques, which I will discuss in following slides. The first one is on prioritization which enables block switch to achieve a low latency. Let's consider the previous example. So here, block switch exploit the multiple egress queues to strictly prioritize and processing of uh, LLAB request over TAB request. For example, let's say some TAB requests are currently being processed. Now, if the LLAB submit a request, the TAB request processing will be preempted immediately to a context switch and the LLAB request will be processed. Hence, the only remaining delay for LLAB comes from context switching overhead and queuing behind other LLAB request, thus enabling a block switch to achieve a near opti optimal latency. Prioritization of LLAB request lead to good latency, but it can also lead to starvation of TFs. For example, if there's a burst of request submitted by the LLAB, then while these requests are being processed, the TAB will get stopped temporarily. To resolve this problem, block switch exploit the flexible mapping between ingress and egress queues. So it dynamically steer the request to underutilized cores at per request granularity. For example, here the core zero TAB request can be steered to core one, which is currently idle. So to make a request steering decisions, block switch keeps track of TAB load across the cores and uses an algorithm to select which cores to steer a request to based on this information. So please see our paper for more details. By performing this kind of request steering, block switch can maintain high throughput even under the transient mode. While request steering uh, mitigate such as transient load, there can be another scenarios where the load is persistent. For example, the LLAB here could uh, generate consistent load for a long time period, or there could even be multiple LLABs running on the same core. So in this case, there's a persistent interference between LLABs and TFs. So this can lead to two problems. First is a high request steering overhead because the TF requests are constantly to steer to other cores. And the second is, it can also lead to high context switching overhead 
if the LLAB generate a request at low but consistent load. So to solve this problem, BlockSwitch performed the application steering. So when there is a persistent load on the core, it moves the applications to other cores with low long-term average load. So for example, here the T app is moved from core zero to core one as uh, mitigating the persistent interference. So BlockSwitch application steering algorithm learns that course grained time scales and account for both LLAP and TF load using well-known techniques. So for more details, please see our paper. So with application steering, BlockSwitch can achieve both high throughput for TFs, even under the such uh, persistent load, and even lower latency for LLAPs due to fewer context switches. We implemented block switch entirely inside the kernel. To stress test block switch, we focus on the case when application access data on remote servers. So in this case, there will be complex interaction among the compute, storage, and network layers. And to push the bottlenecks to end those storage stack processing, we use two servers connected directly over the 100 gigabit link. And for Linux and block switch, we use I10, the state-of-the-art internal remote IO stack, and SPDK uses its own user space embedding of TST implementation. Here, we consider the scenario when the six LLABs and six TFs are packed on six cores. So when we use more than six cores, the network link becomes the bottleneck. Hence, we use only six cores here. Even for such high contention scenario, Black switch can achieve 10 microsecond average latency and 166 microseconds for P99.9 .9 latency. Compared to the Linux, it achieves some 76x better average latency and 11x better tail latency uh, with very little uh, degradation in throughput. And it achieves these benefits by avoiding head over line blocking and by efficiently using multiple verbs respectively. So compared to SPDK, it can achieve support lower latency and high throughput by avoiding the drawbacks of um, polling based systems. And if, even with tens of applications contending for the same host resources, Black Switch can achieve both microsecond scale latency and high throughput. So this slide provides more intuition on block switch performance benefits. We take the same example as seen before. So we start with Linux as the baseline. Now we introduce each of the block switch techniques one after another. First, we introduce prioritization and we can see that it significantly reduced the tail latency, but at the cost of reduced throughput for TF because of starvation. Next, we introduce a request ceiling, and this leads to um, improve the throughput for T app, but at the cost of a slightly increased tail latency for L app due to uh, request ceiling over it at core zero. Lastly, we introduce some uh, application steering, and this leads to a further Im improvement in both latency and throughput. As we see that all block switch design components contribute to achieving microsecond scale latency and high throughput. So we have evaluated block switch on a wide variety of scenarios. So please see our paper for more details on this. So in summary, in this work, uh, we have shown that it is possible to achieve a microsecond latency and high throughput with Linux. Our key insight here is that modern storage stack is conceptually similar to network switches. So building on this insight, block switch decouples uh, request processing from application cores and adapt um, techniques from computer networking literature. So in most scenarios, block switch achieves tens of microsecond average latency and less than 119 microsecond tail latency while maintaining near hardware capacity throughput. Lastly, Black Switch is open sourced. Thank you.